Welcome to Actual Scale Modelling for my next build and building this Bell AH1W Super Cobra from Tamiya. Scale 1 to 172. Um, this is a, a little bit more detailed kit than my last build. Uh, if you haven't catched that all, check out the 144 one, um, scale builds that I've done. I've done about three of them. Um, very quick builds. So in, in the box, um, what we have is oh, just move that we have two sprues and um, it's quite a large model if you look at the size of the fuselage here um, lots of lovely detail on the model and the molds we have the canopy which could do with a bit of clear it's a bit dull a very simple decal sheet and of course the instructions so the normal fit from Tamiya so quite nicely laid out with your sprue plan here and here is your paint list and if you're not sure what paints to use there's also a good guide on the edge of the box here as well. Um, I may just go all time here paints with this one um, just because I've not really used them that much and I do like using time here paints as well as Revell. I generally use a mix of two but if I can't see a Revell uh, equivalent I'll probably use time here only because uh, Revell paints seem to dry quicker than time here paints. That's the only reason why I use them. So that's the box, well, let's get on with the build. Let's start off with, I'm going to be painting um, most of it on the sprue again and I'm going to be using uh, mostly Tamiya paint. So this one is XF20 medium grey and that will be the um, main interior colour. So this is just starting off with the cockpit. I'm using X1 black for the seats and the control rod. There's a quite a nice lot of detail in the cockpit, so it's uh, worth paying attention to. The cockpit um, canopy, I'm painting in XS62 olive drab, and um, depending on what camouflage you're, you're going to be doing or what um, scheme you're going to be doing, it'll dictate which uh, colour you're going to paint your canopy in. There's various little pipes and boxes that you can paint inside the cockpit. So for the pipes and that I'm using UA733 from Life Colour and that's a black rubber shades, uh, tire black. But it gives a nice dusty uh, rubbery look. Part of the instrument panel dials I'm painting in X28 part green as well as X2 white. I'm assembling the cockpit now. The, the seats uh, were painted in XF49 khaki, that was for the actual padding of the seat, and the outer part of the seat was X1 black. The cockpit was easy enough to as assemble. Um, just make sure of the position of the back seat. That can come a little bit tricky um, when, when you're putting the fuselage uh, together. In fact, I, I would recommend not putting on the back until the top half of the fuselage is actually on the helicopter. The rotor mechanism which I am assembling here um, was a fairly straightforward and um, it was painted in XF56 metallic grey. It went together easily enough. Be careful your contact points if you want it to move. There's a little recess it just sits in. Um, I would recommend painting that before you put it in. You can just about see the inside of it once you put the blade and things on. So it's worth giving it a bit of colour. I painted it in XF23 light blue, which is going to be part of the um, camouflage. So now it's time to uh, put the top bar for the fuselage together. It's a simple process, no drama. It fitted in quite well. The exhaust um, is the next 
to, to be assembled. Now you, you want to pre-paint these as well. So I am using the XF23 sky uh, light blue and that's for the inner part that holds the exhaust uh, section and the main part of the exhaust is painted in XF56 metallic grey. As I say you want to pr uh, pre-paint these because um, once they're put together they can be difficult to get your paintbrush in. It's also the same where you're actually going to be putting the exhaust on. You want to give it a bit of background colour so in this case I'm using X23 light blue once again. Um, so the the colour all depends on what camouflage you're going to be, but that's going to be my base colour. So once it was all dried, um, put put on the exhaust. And it was quite easy. It, it's a double exhaust. It just uh, prop, pops into the back, and then it was time to put on the um, the int intake, which is on the opposite side. Again, just fits in nicely. It's time to put the cockpit in now, and uh, it fits in okay with the uh, little location guide uh, in, inside the fuselage here. You, you'll notice I've got a back piece on. Um, I do take that off because um, I couldn't quite get the fuselage to, to fit while that was attached. Send me the back sight. Next was the rear stabilising wing and um, that just slots in as you can see there. That's for both sides. There's a, a little lip to stop it from going in any further. Now it is a very tight fit so be careful when you're test fitting it you don't want to jam it in there. So bonding the uh, two fuselage parts together make sure you line them up. It's quite difficult with the tail fitting as so you have to really push that part in but I found once I push that part in first the um, the, the other um, end just went into alignment straight away. I'm painting the, the landing rails now and initially I painted these in XF26 deep green now that's what the colour was calling for but um, once it was painting the actual model I decided to change that colour. Now the visual is bonded and dried, just uh, getting rid of some of the um, seam lines now. Um, there wasn't much so all that sanding was all required. The upper part of the aircraft model I'm painting in its base colour XF23 light blue. Um, th there's other colours I need to put on it hence why uh, I'm painting it now. The location light at the top that's getting painted in X27 Cleo Red. It stands up quite nicely actually that colour. And next to it there's a little part that gets painted XF56 Metallic Grey. The two do work well in contrast together. So now it's time to uh, bond the top half to the fuselage. Um, I'm just uh, putting in a, a bit of cement inside here. Now this is for the uh, backing plate that goes in. There it is there. Um, I, I just pulled it off it wasn't set yet anyway and then put it in. I just found that I got a better alignment like that than trying to fit the fuselage when it was attached to the cockpit. So after a bit of drying time it was time to bond it and uh, th there's a, a couple of little uh, recessed parts of plastic there that just slips into the um, hole so it actually goes in really well. You, you may have to push it in a bit for the clips to go in next part to go in was the landing rails. Now they're still in the green colour at the moment. Um, the location points are really good on it, no need to modify. Next to go in is the right uh, as the stabilising wings at the front. Now make sure you get these the right way around. There's a little recess which you would think goes in the bottom but it actually goes in the top. Next is the weapon system and the main gun is painted an X10 gun metal and the bracket or gun that runs at the top is um, XF56 metallic grey. The Alsom is painted in the XF56 metallic grey as well and uh, depending on whether you want movement on the, on, on this uh, just be careful of your location points and where you're going to be putting the cement. The forward um, instrument panel goes in now. Why they the choose to put it in the instruction at this stage I'm not too sure but it was easy enough to go in the end. Before you put the gun on, um, you have to put on the um, outer housing because it makes up the carriage for the gun. I had a tiny gap in issue right at the front here. It was probably more me than the kit. So I used Villaggio plastic putty to fill that in. In fact, that's the only gap in issue I had on the entire kit. 
there's a good quality kit there. So while things are drying, I'm taking the opportunity to play to paint the, the blades. So these are getting painted in X18 semi-gloss black. Um, the tips, I, I, I paint it all entirely, then I'll uh, paint in the mechanism and things like that at the end when, when the paint's all dry. Now it's finally uh, time to put in the gun. Um, again, depending on whether you want to move or not, how you're going to put this in. Uh, I wasn't too bothered about movement so much on this. Now, um, don't be tempted to make it fully up um, when, you, when you put it on. The, I would say assemble both halves once it's actually on the model because it can be rather tight to get the whole unit in. So back to the blaze and I'm painting the, uh, the brackets and the mechanical parts in XF 56 metallic grey. Onto the weapon systems and the um, the, the first lot I'm painting in XF62 olive drab. I think these are the, the, the small little um, missile launchers, machine gun things. For the other, other missiles, quite a few of these, I'm painting them in main colour X18 semi gloss black and for the tips it's X2 white. Oh, so there's uh, one or two I paint here, but um, they're quite effective once they go on the aircraft. But time to assemble all, all the uh, little parts like the aerofoils and sensors and so forth. They're all going on now. Luckily there's not many to put on on the, this uh, type of helicopter. Um, a couple of them don't have any location points so you have to do it by, by eye. Now, there's two little parts that go on the stabilizing wings here before you put the weapon system on. And um, this is where you, you needed to put the wings in the proper position because the recess uh, holds this part in. At the back of the tail the little um, supporting foot goes on. Now this is a very thin tiny part. You may want to put it on right at the end. So I'm assembling the weapons onto the brackets now. There's um, four that goes on each bracket. So while the brackets are drying I'm going to be putting down the first coats. So the base coat is XF23 light blue. And the next colour is FX62 olive drab. And for the last of the colour scheme it was XF49 khaki. Assembling mi missiles now. So the um, first uh, little cylinder one goes on first before the um, the, the, the main uh, missiles. The main missiles, the, the black ones that you see there, are uh, four in a bracket and um, the bracket, uh, they're sandwiched in between two brackets before you put them on really. Uh, it's quite a simple process. It looks a bit complicated at first but uh, once you have a look at it you can see how they all go. And down for the canopy, so just a little bit of light cement here. Uh, leave it time for the vapours to evaporate before placing it on. And once it was all dry and I was happy with the painting, it was time to put a varnish on so it's pledge clear of polish. And the same with the blades as well, same varnish I'm using. After a bit of drying time, it was uh, time now to put the decals on. Uh, there's not many decals in this, uh, as you've seen on the decal sheet. Um, they shouldn't cause you any problem. After more drying time, um, quite a lot of drying time because of the decals, it's time to attach the the blades and they just simply push down onto the rotor mechanism. The, it can be a bit tight um, so you may have to push down a bit firmly as you can see what I'm doing there. And it was uh, the same with the, the back one. The, there's a longer pin here to push through. But once it's in, it doesn't actually need any glue. Um, that's how good the, the fit is. So I'm going to bring this build to an end. As you can see, it's all done there. Um, everything fitted perfectly. But for maybe that one little uh, gap issue that I had, which is more my problem than the kit. If you've got any comments or um, any suggestions, feel free to leave them. Um, why don't you check out my other videos? But for now, thank you very much for watching. Bye bye.